Welcome to episode 12. Episode 12 of The Push. The Push. I'm Steve Machine Curran. I'm Kevin Big Daddy Allwood. Oh, there's two screens here. I'm it's some freaking tools. me out. This is the camera here. Yeah. All right. All right. Happy Halloween, Steve. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. It was Halloween this week. I saw some lovely pictures of you and drag. <laughs> was that because of Halloween or just because... Oh, no, that wasn't Halloween. That was, <laughs> oh, that's right. <laughs> that was just... Uh, just standard Wednesday night at your place. Yeah, yeah, you know. Just... just uh, Break the monotony a little bit. And the boys seem okay with it. Yeah, well, see, so Jade. See, I was going to... See, the boys like to go trick-or-treating. Mm. Right? And you like to dress up <laughs> in frogs. And, uh, and I was going to go as like some sort of devil-type mm. character with horns and things. And then somebody suggested Daddy Go as a fairy princess. And my boys thought that was hilarious. Yes. Right? <laughs> and... But the, and I wasn't there when that was suggested. Right, that was okay. just Jade suggesting it to them. Oh, cool! And then when I said, "Oh, well, okay then," yeah, they were they weren't so sure if they thought no, that was a good idea. Oh, <laughs> the uncle would not allow me to do that. She yeah. would be devastated. So I said to Toby, uh, "Do you think that I'd make a good princess, fairy princess?" He said, "No." <laughs> I said, "Do you think I'd make a pretty fairy princess?" He said, "No, no." <laughs> no. Yeah, um, yeah. So you, that's, you, that was what it was, fairy princess. It yeah. Was, I, we should. We'll put the photos on the on the. You already have. Paul yes, I have, I have. It was um. It was pretty funny walking around the streets of the neighbourhood because obviously my sons have been going to school there for a number of years. So yes. they've got friends, and I've met the friends' parents, and all the parents were out with their kids trick or treating, and they all sort of did a double take <clears throat> at me, and then thought it was absolutely hilarious. And yeah. Photos and. That's nice. It's like, like I said, it's it's really cool. It's nice seeing dads um. Not taking themselves seriously and investing in time. Yeah, they kids. thought it was hilarious because yeah. they see me pick up the boys and I yeah. fall around with them in the park playing yeah. and carrying them over my shoulder and stuff and yeah. being all macho and tough and stuff. Yeah. And uh, they got to see your feminine side. That's right. That's right. The true, the true me. <laughs> Did um and were the boys okay with it in the end? Once they, I guess, once they realised everybody thought it was funny, they were cool with it. I think they were fine with it. Yeah. yeah. And then we went and had dinner at a local restaurant, sitting outside, dressed like that. Yeah. That's all great. Was, yeah. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, the girls, bought, Bianca and uh, Gabriella went trick-or-treating. Bianca got a bit disappointed with her dress because she was supposed to be like a um, Bride of Chucky, sort of evil doll. Yes. And it didn't really... People kept asking her who she was. Right. And so she got a bit disappointed. And I told you she was supposed to wear contact lenses and it just became a bit daunting for a 10-year-old to wear contact lenses, yeah. I think. And did she have the doll with the head cut off? She, no, she was the doll. She was oh, like right. a possessed doll. Oh, yes. But she's had some really good ones over the years. She's had mm. one... I don't know if you saw this, the... Um, the possess the sort of zombie schoolgirl. Mm. There's a great photo. Was it last year? A couple of years ago, she had perfect school girl outfit, um, with a dagger through her head. Oh yeah, ponytails and just slight, just blood dripping, <coughs> and walk and Gab slips all the photos in, in the bushes, just walking out of the bushes like that. <laughs> it's pretty full on. Mm. Yeah, kids are getting into it these days. It's good. And it's, you yeah. know what? You know what? The best thing is the lollies. The lollies. Not the lollies. They are that is good, but I've uh, I've I've not Not allowed myself to uh, participate in the consumption of candy. Yeah. The best thing is that the houses, the people who want to give lollies out, decorate the outside of their houses. Yeah. So it's easy to know. And those are the houses that kids go to. Yeah. So people who aren't into it just don't don't decorate your house. Don't get harassed. Yeah. Yeah, It's good. And I think that's really good because, you know, there's nothing worse than tribes of kids coming knocking at your door and you don't want them there you yeah. know what I mean so it's a good thing that's only right come about in the last few years really that you go to the houses that are decorated well when we did it as kids because Paul and I did it in, and my other brother David did it in Townsville back in the 80s mm, I did it too. when no one else was doing it no that's right No, yeah. you just there was went, no decorations either anywhere no you just went to everyone you went to everyone and yeah. most people would go what are you talking about <laughs> right yeah, or try and throw buckets of water on you or, or, or just you get like a, a couple of old um what are those horrible? Were they minties? No, uh, the, the white, white ones in a the minties little, or milkshake lollies? Minties, minties, the chewy ones. Yeah, horrible. They're all right. What do you like minties? <sighs> I like Teeth chocolate. Them. I like chocolate. Actually, when I was thirteen, I went trick or treating with two or three mates, and mm. we went to this house. We were doing this area in New Zealand, and uh, these kids came up the other side of the road, and they called out. They said, "Oh, there's, they're giving away heaps of stuff at number twenty-two or whatever number they oh, said." It was a setup. It was a setup. We went down oh, there. How horrible. <laughs> we went oh, down no. there. And we went up to the door and they were like, hang on a minute. And they left the door ajar and they went away. God, and like, then they came back and it was a, the sun was down the side of the house with a hose and the people oh, inside no. the house had these massive 
like giant buckets full of water and they opened the door and they just fucking got us, covered us, drenched us with water. That's right? a trick, I guess. Because it's a trick, trick or trick. Yeah. So we ran off, <clears> right? <throat> you know, yelling and carrying on. And we decided to get revenge. Forward. Oh, no. No, we got revenge on them. We went back later. Yeah. And, um, burned their house down. Yeah, burned their house down. <laughs> Killed all the family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no one left. And then we went back every year after on the anniversary. And stamped and on their graves. Kept, kept destroying whoever was in that house again. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's actually pretty close to the truth, that, apart from the killing. Okay. Mm. Oh, you kept going back there. Mm. Oh, damn, you don't forget. <laughs> no. um, so we had Jordo on last week. We did. It was nice. He's, he's a good speaker, isn't he? You've you listened, re listened to the shows, I assume. I've only listened to the first half. Okay, second mm. one's up now if you want to listen to it. He talks about his food and his um, his uh, eating competitions, his bodybuilding, and his um, the fact that he's single now. Mm. I've got to get him back on to ask him about that because he was going to... I don't think he might have saying he was going to his first swingers party. <laughs> so we'll find out how it was. Just on that, because um, I... I I've heard from someone who has, might have, might have been to a swinger party. That, Dip their toe in that. Well, it's, I just I was walking subculture. I was walking back from somewhere just then, and I I, I I saw this really hot Asian girl with a really average looking white guy, mm. and it reminded me of swingers. But as, <laughs> Ryan, did you have a story? Someone oh, told it, you. It reminded me of a story someone told yes. me about going to swingers party, where there'd be super hot and, and uh, super hot Asian girl mm. with really average guy, mm. and the guy is usually the one encouraging them to participate in this lifestyle, and yet. Gonna end in badly for the guy, don't you think? Uh, well, what, what, I don't. You need to elaborate a little bit. Well, I don't know. It just seems. It would seem like um, obviously everybody's gonna be interested in the girl. Yes. And um, the guy's just gonna be twiddling his thumbs. Yes, sitting on the sidelines. Maybe that was his thing well, though. Maybe he on... liked to sit on the sidelines, <laughs> twiddling, watching <laughs> while everyone else took their turn. Uh, I think running a, a train is cuckold. Running a train. Cuckold, yeah. Um, Good that we got into this straight away. Maybe that's what, maybe, the, you know, there are cases of guys who have that, that, exactly that, a hot chick, mm. and they like to watch other guys, you yeah. know, have their, have their way. way with them. Mm. Um, so I'm told. Yeah, and there's also, um, there's also the thing where, um, you know, guys, how you, guys, how you look there when you're running back. <laughs> guys, um, pay, like paying for an escort to come with them. Right, and then the and so the it, part. and the girl, the escort is the one. You know, it's the escort because she's hot. Again, the guy's average, and she's like fighting her nails, going and asking for money. Yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah, that's a giveaway, yeah. isn't yeah, it? That generally, <laughs> having sex with someone else for money mm. usually means they will work up. Am I going to get paid an hour later? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, we're on the clock here. <laughs> <clears throat> I'm getting messages now. I thought I actually um, put that on um, uh, airplane mode, but obviously I didn't. Anyway, but Apple. Mess, Apple phones can message you when you're on airplane mode. Can they? Yeah, it can come through still. On iMessage? Yeah, if you're on Wi-Fi. Oh, of course. Mm. Oh, maybe that's why. So you don't get everyone else, you just get your... iMessage people. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that. Because I've done that and had it on silent and everything, and messages come through at night when I turn my phone on flight mode. I, I always put my phone on flight mode at night, do you? Yeah, yeah. I, usually, I, might, I often turn, turn it off. off. Yeah. yeah, fuck that. Whatever, I, it can wait. Exactly. Uh, absolutely. No matter what it is. And yeah. there's never an emergency that's that important. That you need to be woken in the middle of the night. Um, yeah, and well, I do. I do think about that sometimes. If someone want to get in touch with me, and it is an emergency, there's no way to get in touch with me because we don't. Have, do you have a home phone? No. no, I don't have a home phone. I don't even know what the number is for the phone line here. It can wait till the morning, or you mean if someone's like about to connect themselves, yeah, or OD mm. or something. Or, mm. oh, well, that, <coughs> they better ring. They better have another number on their list. Better, yeah, I am. Um, I don't know if you noticed, but my um, my eyebrow. I got my eyebrows waxed. You. <laughs> You, Can't use that word. You, freak. Um, Steve messaged me this morning. Said he couldn't go to the pool because he was getting his eyebrows and his butthole waxed. Yeah, I was being facetious about the butthole because uh, we just that just tied into what we were saying in another <laughs> right, episode. So you didn't actually get the no, it was just waxed. it was the only orifices I got. I was waxed. wondering if they used the same bit of wax that goes on your face. Yeah, they use on my butthole first, right? Then on your face. <laughs> no, um, I the only orifices that got waxed were my nose and my ears. Oh, they did your nostrils. Yeah, it's good. It's your nostrils. Yeah, look, there's no hairs there. How are you going to filter have... all that dust? I don't know. I just it, it snorted all in. <laughs> Um, but I fucking have no sense of direction, right? Like I have, Gabrielle and I have no sense of direction, even with uh, around the city or what? A- anywhere. Like we go to war all the time because we we get lost, and she tells me where to go, and I trust her. So I'm, <clears throat> this place is called a beauty bar. Yes. Um, 
just it's literally I know where the beauty bar in Erskineville, almost at Sydney Park. Now. Yes, yeah, yeah, Sydney Park, yeah. where you where just you, around the corner where from you here. Go cruising. It's just off. It's just off Mitchell Road. Yes, and right. You are just off Mitchell Road. Exactly right. But I I started and I tried, had my. Uh, it's just on those yes, kind of shops. I know this, oh my but God. of course I walked the. I I walked and I was saying this can't be right. So I'm swearing at my phone because mm. it's giving me the wrong the wrong directions. Mm. And I walked to the other end of Mitchell. I was going to drive, and I thought, no, I won't drive, I'll do some exercise. So I walked to the other end of Mitchell Road, down near the post office. Oh, what, what? And then I realised, hang on, this is no, it's saying, Did return you? to route. Yeah. <laughs> so I rang the girl and said, look, I'm a bit lost. I live around the area, but no, we're at the other end of Mitchell Road near Sydney Park. Sydney yes, Park. Yes, yes. And so I walked, and I was all hot and flustered. Um, Who was the woman that was oh, Her name was Georgina. Oh, right. Do you know Georgina? No, I know the one who owns Maria. She, Maria. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah she's well, she was recommended by my friend Matt. Right. Um, mm. How do you know her? You get your um, uh, anal waxing. Ex of my, a couple of exes of mine. Right. Yeah. A couple of You send everyone that, do you? Yeah, I send them there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go and get your shit to sort it out. Get, get your, get here's your the address. Yeah. Here's the GPS. Come back and see me when you're, when you're, when you're ready. Hairless. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't know what to do about that. I just always, it's, it's a common, um, common problem with mine. You were following GPS, you still got lost. Well, I wasn't really following it. I was, well, argue, I was arguing with it because I was saying, this can't be the right way because it's up that end. Because <clears throat> I thought Erskineville was that way. Oh, you dumb fuck. All right. All right. So you got your got waxed? Got, yeah, waxed. What are they like? Well, trim them down and wax underneath. Is yeah, right? so... Um, to get the strays. Yeah, so my friend Maddie says I should get them... I can't even see them. No, I know. Well, my, Maddie says I should get them um, tinted. Yeah, because I've got because it looks like I've got no eyebrows. Why don't you get them tinted blue black like the hair you used to have? <laughs> I see, <laughs> and perm, permed eyelash eyebrows. Mm. Um, don't know about that. Yeah, actually, mine get a bit bushy. Yeah, man. See, I'm not down with that shit. You look mm. like John Howard. Fuck off. <laughs> no, so I got them waxed, and um, but I did get. Them. Have you ever had them tinted? No, you. <laughs> you can't say that anymore, man. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, I take it back, but you still are. Uh, it's ridiculous. Um, it's got nothing to do with your sexual persuasion. Okay. It's just that you're a fucking... It's like saying dickhead. Okay, tell that to the gays. I'm not... It's got nothing to do with What's, gays. I know, I know. Um, so anyway, I, I got them done once before, and they look like caterpillars on my face. You know, that word just got appropriated from... It had another meaning. It I was know. appropriated and used as a do you know slur. Word? Do you know the original Yeah, I do. Used as a derogatory slur against homosexuals, all right? Yes. So it doesn't actually mean gay. No. So anyone <clears throat> can use it as a as a word if you're not referring to a bundle of sticks, all right? Okay. Right? So that's that's the right. original meaning. Yeah, right? I, I, it's right, been, that's right. It's been appropriated by nasty people to use against homosexuals, yeah. right? Okay. But if you're not talking to a homosexual in a derogatory manner, right, and then you use it, Sound like you were. why can't you use it for You can, that, yeah. You can. We live in strange times. Oh, I'm just using it in the privacy of our, of our <laughs> in front of our <laughs> millions of subscribers. Yeah, they love it. <laughs> they told me. <clears throat> mm. um, okay, well, let's move on from waxing. Um, you know, I've got a. I told you I got an injury, didn't I? You did. Fucking poor Stevie. Uh, it's got a hernia. In inguinal hernia. Ingu it's like an iguana hernia. Yeah. What are you grabbing your dick for? Oh, I'm just like. Do you want some? <laughs> I don't know why. Maybe because I, I, I talked about my groin. I've got no underwear on. Because <laughs> like, are you really? You know what? Uh, I've been at the pool. This is my yeah. I just that's like, that's I just get, I can't cope with that. You can't cope with me wearing sweaty no balls. Oh, you can do what you like. <laughs> <laughs> sweaty balls. Sweaty balls. Sweaty balls after the pool. Sweaty balls after a leg workout. Done, works. No, what, you you command all the time. No, I don't. I never use command, but I don't wear undies <clears> for the pool. No, so I have to I have to bring clean undies with me. I have to have a shower at the pool. Oh, I dry just off proper. No, I've I can't. Been, I've no. been in the water with I can't these. be driving in a, in a hot car with sweaty balls. I can't um, be driving in a hot car full stop. No, no. But if I'm a driver, I've got to have cool air. Yeah. All right? right. So that means the window down on a cool day to get the cool air out. Oh, or you to pump the fucker. Yeah. And other people in the can car suck, can, it, suck it up. That's right. right? Because the totally driver agree. 
needs is the to one be controlling your life. That's right. Yeah. And you need to be comfortable. You yeah. don't want to be all whole flop, no. hot and flustered and I bothered. Completely agree. That's right. So driver gets priority. When you're driving a three ton death machine. You need to be actually in control of it and not worried about your sweaty balls. Who? You don't drive a three ton death machine. I drive. I, how much is a how how heavy is a Lexus? Probably like one point four or you, something. No, I don't know. Anyway, it's going fast. It's, it's a goer. Oh yeah, you got a bit of speed behind you. <laughs> Not low enough. I'm not a very good driver. I fucking ran into someone the other day. Do you know that? Did I tell you that? You drove up there, bum. Yeah. Did you? Not in a fun way. <laughs> I just popped my pencil off. Much then. damage? No, nothing, man. I, it's just, I, I, have you noticed that? What happened, though? How okay, so, you know, all golf drivers. All golf drivers are dickheads, right? <laughs> You're aware of that? No. Find a golf car, and it'll be the one dodging, trying to break, like, thinking they're in the fucking Le Mans or something. Is Le Mans a car race or yeah, a bike right. race? Think Boy. they're in the Tour de France. Oh, I don't know. Don't they? I think they're in a like motor race. Oh, yeah. Race. I don't know. Ridiculous. Formula no. One. Formula One. All right. I. That's my opinion. Is they think Bathurst. They wanted to that's buy an expensive sports saying. car, but can't afford a Porsche, so they buy a Golf. Uh, isn't that a V Dub? Yeah. Yeah. But they they just look like a little square little box, hatchback. They? But they're quite fast. Oh, they're quite nippy. Okay. Apparently. Okay. Anyway, they always they always like weaving in and out. Yeah, it shits me. Anyway, yeah, no, what happened? Wasn't really do- behaving like that, but I, it was raining the other day, and my foot slipped off the brake pedal and I bumped the back of it. Literally, just bumped it. Right. And um, and a guy came out, and uh, a little like light popped out, and I popped it back. In, he popped it back in, and the uh, light on the on the golf on the uh, number plate. Yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And <clears throat> nothing was wrong with our car. And of course, now we've got an insurance. Cause our insurance premiums are so high because Gabriello smashes it all the time. All yeah. the time. All the time. So what he. He wanted to get insurance on it. So case. he has. He's, he's, he's contacted insurance. And, but what, uh, what's the, what damage is that? A little light popped out. And it popped back in. Yeah, but it's, maybe it's... I don't know. He, I don't Why know. don't you just give him 20 bucks? I don't I think, think 20 so. bucks would cover it. 50? All right. Yeah, Why don't you? I don't know. Man. Offer it to him. <sighs> Things like that baffle me. Right. Anyway, can we get back to my inguinal hernia? Yeah, he's got an inguinal hernia. Inguinal, inguinal hernia. It's in the, um, the inguinal ducts in your groin. And I actually had a scar there. I had one when I was a child. A lot of young boys get them when they're jumping around like fuckwits, like, like young boys do. And, he, and I actually had one. Back in the day, of course, when they fix something like that, they just cut you open. Now they yeah. do um, keyhole. Yeah. Um, so you had one in the exact same spot before. Well, I can feel it. The scar's there. And now I can feel that the, <coughs> the abdominal wall underneath it is uh, like ruptured. Like 35 years ago, we're talking. Or whatever. Give or yeah, take. 35. <laughs> I wish. Um, I'm 50 in December. Jesus, you're an old bastard. Fuck. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, 35 years ago, I am, um, that's part of my, yeah, so that, they sit, stitched that up. Yes. No drama. Just, just, on a, just on another note, this is very personal, but I'll tell you anyway, because it's just you and me. <laughs> I had to have a, um, I had to have a circumcision. I performed, um, because my foreskin was too tight for my oh. penis. You, you hear about those being rare cases of like it was a surge like it was it was it wasn't any sort of required. weird weird um not weird well religious thing right right so you had it because of necessity yeah medical necessity well the penis was so large <laughs> that the foreskin couldn't cope right uh maybe not but i did have to have this the the uh circumcision yeah and i i, I part of my childhood trauma i think was apparently my so it was when I was two, right? So a lot older. And um, not really, because these days, doctor, well, actually, I got my boys circumcised. I did? Why? Because I am. Okay. And the doctor that I saw won't circumcise a boy until he's one year old. Okay. So he can be put under and then he can do a nice precision cut. Yeah, not like a not like, like a, a new boy, like a Jewish moil. Oh, fuck, fuck. So that's, that's just barbaric. 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 Yeah, no, no. So it can be, you know, the kids moving. If the kids moving around, how can you fucking? Make well, it happens. They cut them off sometimes. Yeah, for fuck's sake, man. This is much more logical. Yeah, yeah. To wait till their body can handle an anaesthetic. Yeah. And then just do a nice precision cut. Yeah. And like we went to pick up each boy after he came out of the thing, and he's fine, totally yeah. fine. Not never once, not well, complained well, once. Well, see, this is in this is in like 1970, right? And yes. Apparently, I was in so much pain after the procedure that my dad would. Because he got infected then as well, oh, and my dad, my mum told me later that my dad would sit in the uh, salt bath with me yes. and hug me because oh. of the pain. You know? mm. 
And I think that's... And you, you probably had to be careful picking the scab off in case you pick your whole penis off too. <laughs> <laughs> right? Uh, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe that's part of why mm. you know, I'm just the way I am. <laughs> so, but, okay. So I've got to have... I'm a bit, you know, so... I was all ready for the summer shred, gonna get in the best shape of my 50, yeah. and I've gotta have the surgery. And the thing is, every time I, del I of course, I had been in denial and tried to ignore it. I was, you know, stiff-legged deadlifting on Wednesday with 120s, the 120 pound dumbbells, and um, I could, you know, just pushing through it, and then of course, literally the stuff. The, the you would think that that motion of standing up, thrusting your hips forward would be the complete opposite thing of what you should do when you've got a hernia. Yeah. Mm. She shouldn't. You say you shouldn't do that. That's right. With yeah. 120 pounds, no, because of the pressure. Imagine yeah. the pressure you so fucking I, 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 Well, I, so I don't think I should bend over much anymore. Oh, there goes your weekends. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sad. That's so sad. So sad that you're missing out. It's so lame. I guarantee you, people are laughing. <laughs> Are yeah, right that's now. how sad we are. Yeah, but that's all right. <laughs> yeah, so any movements that involve me, put, yeah, in going bending over at the waist. Oh, Can Steve. I just say, I, I won't name names, but I had these super hot clients, these, um, and um, one of the, the, I was training them on stiff legged deadlifts. Mm. And oh, um, I think I already yeah, know this. Yeah, you know who they are as well. But and I know this and, yeah, yeah, and the girl, and I was trying to say that when you, so when you, your soft knees, break at the hips first, push your hips back. When you push your hips back, squeeze your glutes to initiate the movement back forward. She said, yeah, but when I'm in this position, I, I don't really, I'm not used to squeezing my glutes. <laughs> God, nice. Oh. Yeah, nice. Anyway. But the fallout of all this, I can't, because I, I can't, look, as you know, I tore my adductor, mm. um, adductor, mag, adductor magnus. That's fixed? Well, pretty much. Not really, man. Like I've been, it's taken me a long time to get back to squatting properly. Mm. And um, can't really deadlift, and so there's not a lot of movements. So I'm ba the fallout is that I'm I'm losing my butt. Oh, I've got no glutes. I'll show you. So, <laughs> you really? Look, I think it's more. Okay, I've got it. I've got the thing. So I don't, I don't know. But... <laughs> Jesus Christ! <sighs> All right, we're gonna get that back. Right. So, I'm a bit dis <laughs> I'm a bit disturbed because I can't squat. Can so you, can you lunge? I'm thinking that no, of course not. So I'm thinking mm. what I've got to do is um is do like glute specific workouts like the um thrusts the bikini girls. So hang on, <clears throat> yeah. Well, that that's one option. Doing all those banded thrusty yeah, things. Yeah, banded you, thrusty thrusty things. <laughs> thrusty. You, look, you look good doing that. Yeah, yeah I can see you. The doing post glute. That. <coughs> so if you're on your back with you know, in the bridge position doing those upward hip thrusts, yeah, that's not in the bent over position. So you'll be no, right. I'd be fine. I'd yeah. be fine on my back. <laughs> there you go. So we've got a bit of light at the end of the tunnel that's for your right. weekend activities. <laughs> back on. Do you think again. I could bring my glutes back? Better put Did out. You, a, what, what was your? Would you say they? I've lost some. I think you better put out a, a, a tweet just telling everyone that you're back on. Back on what? Back on weekends. <laughs> Weekends are back on. Um, no, no, mate. Look, from what I saw just then, it, it looked like there was some substance left. <laughs> okay. Still. That's good to know. It's not going to disappear in a couple of days. You know, it has... It ha no, it ha it, no, I'm talking months because I haven't been able to squat heavy. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, this but, is... Okay, but you'd already built up a surplus, right? Over yeah. the past 20 years. Yeah. You built a surplus of glute. Of butt. Right? Yeah. So you had extra. Okay. So you can afford to lose a little yeah, bit. See, that's why you've got to train hard when you're young. Yeah, that's right. Build up your quad. You're always going to lose size in the lower half of your body. You see all these old men with skinny legs. I'm not going to do it. Right? Skinny quads, skinny legs, skinny ass. So you've got to build up as much as you can in your 20s and 30s. I, re I think so much. Paul Haslam said, when I port to my doctor, mate, that's it. You're never going to be squatting heavy again. I was like, fuck that. Mm. And then this, and then so that starts healing. I start right. squatting heavy again, and then my groin goes. Right, Is this the beginning of the end? <sighs> Stem cells. Yeah, we talked about that. Yeah, I don't know, mate. I mean, that's not good. I don't, I don't, I'm not very happy to think that this might be my fucking future. No. As well. So no. You're my future. Yeah, self. but you always train a lot. You, well, <laughs> I mean, that leads into the um, the Roddy Coleman movie. You, you trained a lot more sensibly than I did. Mm. But 
I think the hang on no no wait, hang on before we get to that. So the surgery. When yeah. Have you booked in for the surgery? I haven't booked in. I've got a doctor. I'll be looking at his website. Um, so the surgery will take how long? A surgery is day surgery. Day, you're in and out. Right, then you come out and yeah. you've got how long? Before? Well, that's the thing. You've got six weeks recovery now. Six weeks of not doing well, I any think, resistance training on your... I think at least four weeks of not... Because as you know, that breathing yeah. that you would do for a squat or a deadlift... I've, and even when we trained back yesterday, I was really trying to not breathe like that, mm. which is really hard. Mm. Um, so I but think. How did you go doing those upper back exercises? Uh, I it just felt re really tentative. Like yeah. I felt like when I was getting to a point where the the you know you're getting to a point of failure with you know the reps that count. Yes. I felt tentative about pushing it mm. because it changes your breathing the when pressure you pressure. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm. Well, look, I've got the solution for you, Steve. Uh, Roller skating? No. Triathlons. <laughs> you could become a triathlete. You That's... could you could develop the triathlete body. <laughs> I think yeah. I've got it. <laughs> and you can, you can focus on cycling <clears throat> and swimming and running. Yeah, I'd rather, all the things you love. I'd rather top myself. <laughs> Actually, I don't mind running. I don't mind sprints. I don't mind cycling. Maybe I should do it. Can you swim? Oh, you can swim. No, I can't swim for shit. I, I mean, I can swim, but I'm maybe duathlons then. No, so. what I this is my plan. I'm gonna just. I'm going to get the surgery done fairly soon and just I just practice acceptance. Accept it till the end of the year. Um, I'll have a holiday at the end of the year. Are you going to be able to do any form of training? Not for not for about four to six weeks. What about bicep curls, by arms? Yeah, yeah. You oh, can, look, your arms can catch up. Yeah, good point. There's always a, <laughs> silver, always a silver, silver, lining. silver lining. There we go. Because <clears throat> you can do unilateral arm stuff. It's not, it's not about... Yeah, that should be all right. Well, not for about four weeks. Arms. Like, you can train arms. Preacher curl. Well, how's that going to bother you? Do a preacher curl. Do a curl now, um, and like you're doing it hard. Imagine you're doing a curl. Yeah. yeah. And squeeze hard. And why well, can't you flex your stomach? No, of course not. Oh, where is it on your? But isn't it it's down in my here. groin? In my groin, yeah. But every time you do that valsalva movement, where you go. Uh, oh, you can't do any overhead triceps. No, man. So look, I, I mean, my friend Ben um, had a umbilical hernia, like the belly button hernia. And he, um, it took him a long time. He booked clients the, the next week after getting it done. He just had to cancel them. <coughs> I should speak to Medax. Medax has, has it done as well. Right. Uh, and he's more of a, he's a warrior, you know. So he would have, he would have trained at the earliest time possible. I was feeling really disappointed and depressed with myself and just feeling sorry for myself in general because of that. Then I watched the Ronnie Coleman movie. Ronnie Coleman, The King. It's on Netflix. The Ronnie Coleman story. If, if any of you out there who don't know who Ronnie Coleman is, you're a bitch if you know. <laughs> he was uh, Mr. Olympia from '98 for eight years straight. Yeah, and, I think the uh, goat, the greatest of all time. After Dorian retired, it left it left the it left the stage open for yeah. a new a new champ, and uh, because <clears throat> Flex Wheeler had been winning everything mm. that year, yeah, like he'd won half a dozen every comp he'd entered, he'd yeah. won. Yeah, everyone thought it was naturally going to go to him, and he had a phenomenal physique. Yes, but <clears throat> uh, kidneys weren't so great. But Ronnie Coleman, who who competed in the Olympia for a number of years, yeah, prior, playing never, ninth, never done any good in it. Yeah, um, he upped his game. Yeah, and he came through and he took the vic snatched victory from Flex. And anyway, the movie, the film, is a doco. And it's basically his story throughout that period, all the way through up until currently, when he's all fucked up, injured, yes. and like can hardly walk. Had to learn how to walk again. He's had both hips replaced, about eight surgeries on his back, joints are all messed up, multiple screws uh, in, in his, his back, spine, which has yeah. since broken off in his spine. Uh, um, <coughs> quite a good documentary, though. I yeah, and one. and. At, <coughs> And of course, he knows his cameras on him, so that you know it's not complete reality. But man, he's pretty upbeat. Like he's pretty positive, yeah. and you can t more so. You know, you know, in those little inc incidents where he's going into a shop, and the person and person opens the shop for him, he's just so polite mm. and humble with everyone. And the dude is struggling to walk. I think he was like that throughout his for sure. career. Yeah, and all the guys that they interviewed, yes, all the other champs from that time had a lot of respect for him. him. Yeah. Um, it, on, on that, isn't Jay Cutler a class act? Like the stuff that Jay what he said about him. Well, just yeah, he he was, he said like I didn't beat Ronnie at my at his best. Like yeah. for him to admit that's pretty cool. Yeah, right? yeah. And that he um how much respect he had for him. Mm. 
as opposed to Sean Ray that sort of made it about him again by saying, um, yeah, no, if it was me, I wouldn't have done that. <coughs> but um, <clears throat> I think um, he's, it's interesting looking at Dorian Yates, who also was a warrior when he trained. And then Ronnie, Dorian realised he reached a point in his career and training and he said, okay, this is enough. Mm, I'm, I can't, done I, I'm done with this. And I, I need to find other facets of, of things in my life. Whereas Ronnie, it, it, I mean, he's inspiring. It's, it's powerful, the fact that he keeps going, but it, I don't get the impression that there's, he hasn't got a lot else in his life. I mean, he's got his family and everything, but... He's got young kids. I know, but yeah. like Yates is doing the meditation, um mountain biking you, you know like it just seems that um he seems a lot more fulfilled like ronnie's still going to the gym and trying to bust his ass when he's falling apart and yeah. i find that inspiring that he's trying but yeah even after all the surgeries he's still going to the gym and training all, mm. every, all the yeah. time i get it i totally get it my my mother was um my mother's whole body like you know those x-rays with the screws and things in them of ronnie his yeah. whole, her whole body yeah. looked like that. My mum's whole body looked like that. She was riddled with arthritis. She had screws all through her body. She was in constant pain. And she always kept going, would go for walks, kept going because she said, if she, you, I, in, I, with arthritis and soon as you stop, it's yeah, if you, if, yeah, you, yeah. if you don't move it, you lose it. Yeah. But um, I don't know. Was she doing that right up until the end? Or she was yeah, she was squatting, active? squatting about 400. <laughs> <laughs> no. Was she staying active? No, nah, man, her body fell apart. It was very sad. Like her, her joints were like butter, they were just collapsing. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> the Ronnie Calm, I think it was, it's good to see. It's it's good to um, see someone who is, if not overcoming challenges, is at least uh, he's not fucking bitching about it, is he? Doesn't seem to be, no. no. <clears throat> we talked about hot Asian girls and uh, average white boys. Yeah. <laughs> We did. My brother even admits it. My brother's married to a beautiful Japanese girl. Mm. And um, although Paul was good looking when he was a kid, a uh, young man, and um, but he said, yeah, they all go to Japan, meet all the nerdy, because he's quite nerdy. He's, he's got, a, you know, he's a published author, my brother. Yeah, he's got a couple of um, books out, and um, and uh, he said they all go to get nice, nice thing to Thailand, I guess, isn't it? What do you do? I think the Asian women tend to be a bit more. Um subservient and and um what's the word i'm looking for submissive submissive yeah look after their men mm. that attitude but then have you noticed when there's an asian and we're probably obviously being are we being racist by saying this generalizing perhaps? generalizing yeah, massive stereotypes um have you noticed when it's an asian couple the the young, especially if they're young the boy carry oh yeah we've had this discussion the boy carries the handbag for a girl have we i don't remember that okay Is yeah it? that's the thing why uh, it's what they do. They carry the handbag for you. Go through Chinatown. I haven't noticed that. And that's the boys. Time there. Yeah, the boys always. Why do you spend a lot of time there? <clears throat> I spend a bit of time there. The boys carry <clears throat> the handbags for the women. Looking for Asian boys. What do you think? <laughs> that's what I thought. Yeah. That's exactly what I thought. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> when you're not at Sydney Park. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or Rush Cutters. Or... Rush Cutters. Oh, is that a, yeah. a beat? There is a beat. <laughs> All right. You should know. Let's check it out. <laughs> All right, let's go now. <laughs> <clears throat> so how's the diet going man looks like you actually you've got it together yeah good man yeah so what are we now T tomorrow will be 14 days two weeks fucking mm. completely 100% stripped All th yeah. and through Halloween that's great through Halloween through weekends yeah nah we're fuck we've got to do that workout in a couple of weeks mate yeah man I'm, I'm fucking falling apart tough we shook on it <sighs> that's gonna suck man fuck keep the diet clean I am man. I am get on that bike do the car. Do what? Do do become a cyclist? Yeah, man. No, I'm still training. I, I trained. Um, I did a bit of arms today. It's just, uh, I just, yeah. Yes, do what you can. My inclination is to push it and go fuck it, and because that's what I've always done. But like, I just, I feel like I can't do that with this. No, nah, not if it's a serious thing, man. Like if it was just a little twinge, maybe. But it's not. You've been diagnosed with a fucking thing, right? Yeah, I've been diagnosed with a thing. <clears throat> a fucking thing. <laughs> fucking thing. <clears throat> that's the technical term. Mm-hmm. We've got a smiley face behind us. I think we've had that before. That's right. We've got it again. Um, you were telling me about a crazy eating story the other day. Um, how you, you used to stand on the scales and eat until oh, you yeah. gained a yeah, kilo yeah, yeah. whilst eating. Yeah. In my uh, perma bulk days. <clears throat> yeah. Because um, I, I went from 60 kilos to 90 kilos naturally. 
Yes. And um, so 30 kilo weight gain. Mm. And I did that by just, or at least, you know, it's, it's a cliche, they say, you would make eating a second job. And that's pretty much, I made it my first job. Mm. And there was no uh, thought about macros or uh, ratios or anything like that. It's pretty much just a carb fest. Right. So I'd like have a bowl of baked potatoes and just keep eating them. I think that story in particular was um, pasta. Like I had a, literally a huge bowl of pasta and I, uh, with bolognese. Like I yes. just be, and I'd eat it and then to the point of like wanting to vomit, wash it down with some water and then go and weigh myself. And you weighed yourself at the start, obviously. I kept weighing myself until I'd <coughs> eaten a kilo of food. <laughs> it worked, though. How, yeah. Why, why, how often did you do that? Oh, as much as I could. You know, probably <coughs> every few days. Every few days you had one meal that was like that. I was just constantly eating. I just had no... I had no... Um, but the actually weighing yourself... Oh, I didn't do that all the time. I, didn't, I only did that you know, <coughs> in the privacy of my own home. I used to go out to nightclubs and shit and I'd have pockets full of protein bars yeah. so that I could make sure I got 30 grams of protein yeah. every three hours yeah. no matter what I was no yeah. matter what sort of no, state I, was I was never, in. I never did that once I discovered no, I clubs and that mate if you don't eat you don't grow right I was or you fucking shrink so and I you were thinking that. about that when you uh, yeah really I would yeah. pull them out and they'd be dry as fuck I'd be chewing <laughs> and chewing it's <laughs> taking so it's fucking half an hour to eat to chew through one mouthful so wash it down on the dance floor did that all the time for all those years of Party protein bar that. ammo, protein bar ammo, something like that. Um, <coughs> I did, with, I did with protein drinks, but it usually wasn't until I was leaving and I get one at the store outside. Yeah, and if well, I did that too as well. But if there was no protein drinks, which there wasn't much range back then, no, no. I just buy a liter of milk and drink the whole liter of milk. Yeah, I drank a lot. I drank a lot of milk in my formative years, and I um, and I had a permanent uh, gluggy sort of cough. From the milk, I think yes, yeah, some sort of lactose intolerance thing, like it's like a, a like a reaction, right? Um, and uh, I was just yeah. thinking, about no, it wasn't anything else. It wasn't really ridiculous. <laughs> I didn't <laughs> say it. I was just thinking about Snuff gay, gay innuendos <laughs> for one podcast. Yeah, that creamy mm. stuff going on. Oh, All right, on. Um, and as well as having protein bars in or shake and takes when they came out too. Yeah. Um, I would have stashes of uh, Nuts. tuna in my car. Oh, and hot. And uh, one of those stick blenders. What? A stick blender? Where would you plug it in? Oh, back at like the after party. Whoever's house we went oh, to man, afterwards. Was... I, would, I would get out. I'd have a plastic litre jug that I'd stolen from a pub back in my younger years. You know, it was an oct- like, octagonal fucking yeah, plastic yeah, bottle. Yeah. <clears throat> and I would put my tuna in there, top it up with water, and then blend it, and then drink oh, the tuna shake. Yeah, the tuna shakes. Yeah, I did that religiously for a couple of years. I hated tuna, mm. but I couldn't, and I couldn't stomach really eating it, so mm. I drank it, and it was yeah, all I in tr- there within about yeah. ten seconds. And, it was down. and you were able to keep it down. Yeah, man, I tried that once and just could not do it. I thought. There's got to be a better way. I just, I'd rather eat it. I tell you, like, for in 2000, for 20 weeks, I my diet was 200 uh, grams tuna. 200 grams. Well, first, I had, so I was, I was 110 kilos fat as fuck. Yes. <clears throat> before the show, before, like six weeks, six months out, I had eight week bix um, with water and uh, I think like six egg whites and then f- uh, cooked egg whites. Yeah. Eaten separately to the wheat bits. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then, um, um, f- a shake after I trained, which was 50 grams of protein, 50 grams of carb powder, and <clears throat> four, then four meals of 200 grams tuna and brine and 200 grams cooked rice. And that's what I ate for 20 weeks. And no vegetables. No, no. Mm. No vegetables and no no sanity either. I was mental by the end of it. Yeah. But best, best shake. You know that, that video that's in City Gym on TV <coughs> on that show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, and f- twice 45 minutes cardio a day. And how many weights training a day? Oh, uh, once I only train four days a week. I never train right. more than that. You're right. You just had a mental blank. Yeah, I was going to say something before. Okay. Because on your phone. No. It's old age, brother. Are you, do you find um? Do you find you got short term memory loss? Or no, I have. Hmm. You've forgotten. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I don't really have short-term memory loss. I don't think I don't think I suffer from that. I did it a bit when I was uh, chuffing. I'm just not surprised. Right. But uh, not these days. Um, 
<clears throat> I find if I don't put it on my phone straight away, like a client's uh, appointment or a note for like the podcast or something, it's gone. It's gone. Oh, yeah, actually, no, no, I, I have to correct myself then. I do forget shit. Mm -hmm. You're right. You see, you forgot that you forgot shit. Yeah, I forgot that I forgot shit. Yeah. Yeah, no, but I did remember what I was, what I'd forgotten. What was that? Okay, that I, I <laughs> back to the blending the tuna. Yes, disgusting. I, um, I, I wondered, one day I thought, mm, I wonder if I could put a whole meal in the blender and drink a whole what meal. What sort of meal? <laughs> 200 grams of lamb cooked, mm. rice, well, no, sweet potato, sweet potato, and veggies. I put it. I put it. How'd that go? I videoed it. Oh. And yeah, so I put it in the blender. You obviously have to add water to, Shh, to blend of it. Of course, yeah. And then add more water because it was too thick. Yes. And then I drank it. And did you vomit? No, but it wasn't so good. <laughs> ah, that made me really heavy. Yeah. But I filmed, I've got it. I did it. took about three or four videos, 30 second videos, mm. doing each component mm. of that, that process. The tuna, th the tuna shake is a big thing. I know Simon Reese today saying he. He, the run guy owns ASN he did that for a long time right he would do it in apple juice or something I think apple tuna, juice tuna oh, and apple yeah. juice that might make it taste a bit better feel that I've heard of pineapple juice it's quite um satisfying feeling it it's one of my daughter's pens it's quite odd I don't know I think it's chocolate eclair with a pen inside yeah don't break it these are squishies these are the popular thing well actually I think they're over now but Bianca had a whole YouTube channel devoted to squishies <coughs> All right. anyway <coughs> It's very hot, isn't it? It is pretty warm. It's if you if you made it hot in here on purpose, Steve, so that I get all hot and flustered and no. get undressed in front of you. No, and I just did that earlier. You did. You did. Um, all right. That's you got anything else to talk I about? Think that covers it, brother. Mm. Um, we should ask people to subscribe and thank you. Big thank you to the people that come up to us and actually subscribe uh, down here. Yeah. Tell us. Tell us that they like the show. And, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Hey to Camille. She's a uh, good uh, part of the City Gym family from years back. Yeah. yeah. Also, like. actually, Steve Mack told us he like told me he likes the show as well. Right. He's been listening to it. Been, mm. And uh, Jordo, Nick Oki, um, some other people. Anyone else you know? Oh, Todd Williams. Oh, Gav Burston, big the Gavinator. Yes. He uh, he loves the podcast. Podcast. He'll be and, coming back to City Gym soon. And Maddie as well. Maddie says she's uh, she listens to it and posts on our page, and also is, um, as I said, wants to be on the show. Eventually. I checked our emails yesterday. No. Yeah, nothing. No, no, no. no. Mm -hmm. So email address is the Push Podcast twenty eighteen at gmail dot com. Any questions you have? Yeah. Anything you want to get off your chest? Mm -hmm. you know? And if you want to slide into our DMs on Instagram, the Push underscore Podcast. And uh, if you want to um, have a date. Have a date with Jordo. Not with either of us because we're both married. Date cool. with Jordo. Jordo. You can reach, find him on Grinder. <laughs> the Fat Red. Fat Red on Instagram. Hit him up and you can have a burger with him. You can. You can have your burger <laughs> after you have a Beef burger. burger. You can have his beef burger. Mm. And All I right. think that's about it for another week. Episode 12, y'all. All right. Stay tuned and uh, subscribe and we'll see you next time. Peace out.